Ryzen 7000 processors are here, and for many people that raises more questions than it answers. One of the biggest questions on people's minds right now is which CPU is now the best for the mainstream gamer. For 1080 and 1440p gaming that doesn't break the bank, is the new Ryzen 5 7600X the best bet? Or should you instead stick with the i5-12600K? Or heck, should you even consider the last generation Ryzen 5 5600X? In this video, we'll be finding out. We've tested a range of synthetic and gaming benchmarks to see which CPU is really best for building a mid-range PC right now. Let's do this. The Gigabyte Aura 17 range of gaming notebooks are fantastic for playing the latest AAA titles at the best settings. With a 1080p 360 hertz display, these are awesome for competitive gaming, featuring 12th gen Intel Core processors, which boast phenomenal single and multi-threaded performance for gaming and productivity applications. Learn more and check out the full range at the first links in the description below. Let's start off by looking at the basic specs of these chips, because unlike a few years ago, all cores and threads are not made equal. Let's keep it simple first. The Ryzen 7600X and the Ryzen 5600X, both the latest Ryzen 5 chips, both six cores and 12 threads. The new 7000 series doesn't improve in any way over the older 5600X in this regard, but with a totally new manufacturing process, whole new architecture, the cores on your 7600X are certainly going to be better. One area these chips are set apart is the clock speeds. With a base clock speed of 3.7 and a boost of 4.6 gigahertz on the last gen 5600X, and an improved base clock of 4.7 gigahertz, that's really, really quick, on the new 7600X, your single thread performance is certainly going to be better on the new processor. That's gonna make a massive difference in a range of titles, where we often saw surprising results where the 7600X, the mid-range Ryzen 5 chip, actually became one of the best gaming CPUs on the market, beating out even AMD's new Ryzen 9 and Intel's current flagship 12900K. In some respects, our i5-12600K is similar, sort of. With 16 threads, you've got the same number of logical processing threads, but with 10 cores, you've actually got more core-based processing power. The difference though, is that it only really has six cores that we'd regard to be good for gaming. It's got six of Intel's performance cores, their P cores, and four of their efficiency cores, their E cores. Obviously, the extra four cores on the Intel processor, although they're their efficiency-based ones, are still a bit of a bonus. The only thing really to take note of is that the boost clock speed of the 12600K tops out at 4.9 gigahertz, and that's not on all cores. That's only going to be on a couple of your performance cores. The Ryzen 7600X will boost right up to its maximum clock speed of well over 5 gigahertz on all cores. Now, so far, it's sounding like a bit of a win for the 7600X, which is something you'd hope to be the case considering it's probably the most expensive of the three, though prices will drop, and of course, it's the newest. But there are a few big caveats to take note of that sets the 7600 apart from the competition in a bad way. Not only is it the most expensive in terms of CPU, the motherboards are actually pretty extortionate. You need to go for the extreme versions of the chipsets to get access to PCIe 5 for your GPU. Cheaper boards only support PCIe 5 for M.2 drives, something that Intel's 12th gen lineup hasn't necessarily had a problem with. What's more, Ryzen 7000 exclusively supports DDR5 memory. There's no DDR4 whatsoever. Take this Corsair DDR4 16 gig kit for around 70 or 80 dollars. You could pick that up and get gaming straight away on the 12600K. A DDR5 kit with comparable latencies is going to cost double or nearly triple, making the Ryzen 5 7600X considerably more expensive. It's not just the motherboard that's more pricey, it's the memory too. As if that wasn't sort of bad enough for our 7600X, it's also quite a warm CPU. And to make sure you can hit those really high boost clock speeds of over 5 gigahertz, awesome for gaming, like the 7600X has really, really strong single thread performance, you'll also need a more pricey cooler. 
You can easily call the 12600K and achieve peak clock speeds on a 40 or $50 air cool air. That's simply not quite going to be the case when it comes to the 7600X. Now, with this being said, prices for motherboards and especially memory will come down for the new Ryzen Gen, and you do pay always a price premium for that cutting edge hardware. But with these important prerequisites out of the way, how exactly does it perform? You can use the timestamps on the little scrolly, I don't know what it's called, the navigation bar. You can use that to skip through and choose which exact games you want to use. All of the games we tested were at 1080p and 4K. At 4K, you're going to be more CPU limited than you are at 1080p. And the reason we used the 6950XT, a very expensive GPU to test with, was to give AMD the advantage of smart access memory and also to make sure that the CPU was the bottleneck. Let's start off then, shall we, with Cinebench. Let's look at the single thread result straight away. And when I say the Ryzen 5 7600X is a single thread king, I mean it. With nearly 2,000 on our single thread core, we got slightly more, only a little bit, than the i9-12900K, a chip that costs like double or maybe more this CPU. We beat out the i5-12600K by around 70 points, though it still stacked up well and blew any of the last gen Ryzen CPUs, including the 5800X3D and the 3600X, an old budget CPU shout, out of the water entirely. Even the Ryzen 5 5600X really struggled to keep up up with a nearly 25% performance gain on the new CPU. Good for AMD here and some impressive performance results off the bat. On the multi-core side of the equation, results were also fairly good for our 7600X, but it did get beat out by the 12600K. That's mainly because the 12600K has 10 cores versus Ryzen's 6. I was a little disappointed to see AMD not push the envelope here to around eight cores, as I think eight fully fledged cores would have made a bit more of a mark. The Ryzen 9, which we've looked at in another video, performed very well here on par with the 12900K, while our Ryzen 5 7600X provided a very strong increase over the 5600X, but fell fairly short to Intel's i5 12600K. If gaming is not your only foray and you want to do some video editing or rendering, pick up the i5 12600K is plainly a better shout. We also ran the 3 d Mark CPU profile test, where it's going to test the performance output at a range of different thread sizes on all of our CPUs. If we take a look at the graph here, the older Ryzen 5 5600X sat at the bottom, that's to be expected, as it is basically the worst CPU on our list today. The i5-12600K beat out the 7600X on the higher core count variants, but when testing on two threads and four threads, the most important number for gaming, the 7600X did beat it out. This graph is simply ordered by max thread CPU scores to make it a bit more readable, but drill down into the little numbers. If we then brush through into the two final synthetic benchmarks, 3D Mark's Time Spy, then Fire Strike, here the Ryzen 5 7600X once again beat out its older 5600X predecessor by a good margin, but fell short to the 12600K. Not good considering it's a much more expensive platform to go for Ryzen 7000 this time around. 3D Mark's Fire Strike did mix things up a little bit though, more representative perhaps of those single thread oriented games, whereby our Ryzen 5 7600X 7600X actually beat out the Ryzen 9 5900X from the last generation and quite consistently beat both the Ryzen 5 5600X and Intel Core i5-12600K. The favours then starting to turn to the ways of AMD. And the good results carried on rolling in in Formula 1 2022. In the benchmark mode at 1080p ultra high settings, the i5 sat at the bottom of our lineup with the last gen Ryzen 5 following with better numbers and the Ryzen 5 7600X beating both of the other contenders out by a very strong margin. We got nearly 30 FPS more here with a Ryzen CPU over our Intel 12600K, a massive sign that A, this game is pretty well optimized for Ryzen, but also that it likes fast single threaded performance. At 4K, the results were once again pretty solid. The Ryzen 5 5700X beat out the 12600K by about 10% and provided an incremental performance bump over the last gen Ryzen 5 5600X. 4K is a great test here because we're definitely going to be CPU limited, something which is going to help us evaluate which of these processors is best. You can see this by the massive gains that the Ryzen 9 7900X made, whereby the CPU here was certainly the bottleneck. 
In Battlefield 2042, AMD fans will once again be able to rejoice, with the Ryzen 5 7600X pulling an astronomical lead over the i5 12600K. Ryzen on the whole here performed very well, with our 5600X even beating out an i9 12900K somehow. Pretty crazy. If you look at the results here, AMD once again fallen in favour, with the very high single threaded performance speeds, because of those 5 gigahertz plus clock speeds, really paying dividends here for Team Red. Moving up to 4K where we are much more CPU limited and the results didn't quite fall in the favour of AMD. At low resolutions like 1080p, you can see where these more mid-range chips definitely excel, but at 4K, the Ryzen 5 7600X falls apart. It's lower than the 12600K and only beats out its little brother, the 5600X, by 5-4-5%. Not very good when you consider the price difference and of course the age difference between these two CPUs. The 5600X launched over two years years ago and the 7600X is pretty state of the art. At least it's supposed to be. In Apex Legends, the results were very similar to what we've seen across the board. At 1080p, the Ryzen 5 7600X excels and beats out Intel by a strong margin, but moved to 4K and the 12600K's higher core count and more multi-threaded optimized workload certainly starts to pay dividends. The high single-threaded clock speeds at 1080p of the 7600X work very well. It's the same in Spider-Man. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, 1080p high, the 7600X beat out our whole roster of other CPUs. It beat every single processor on this table, which is crazy. Even the top end i9-12900K and AMD's own Ryzen 9 7900X, which is more optimized for multi-threaded rather than single-threaded workloads. Move up to 4K and of course the more expensive, higher core count chips do win, with the i9 and Ryzen 9 chips sitting at the top of our lineup and the 7600X beaten out Intel's Core i5 by literally decimal points. You see in here that these chips are are very very much on par and those high resolutions our Intel CPU does excel a little bit. Now obviously for the mid-range gamer who isn't gaming at 4k that makes the Ryzen 5 7600X undoubtedly a very good choice but the only major caveats I'd have are around motherboard and memory cost. I can't help but feel like AMD dropped the ball a little bit here in not supporting DDR4. I understand how difficult it perhaps is from an architecture point of view and the extra speed and bandwidth of DDR5 especially once it's matured a little bit more will surely start to pay dividends for gamers everywhere. But for those looking to build a mainstream rig, how on earth can I recommend the Ryzen 5 7600X when it also means shelling out $200 more than you'd have to spend on a comparable i5 12600K setup? Now of course to AMD's credit they've created a very very well performing CPU here for gaming and with cheaper B lineup chipsets coming very soon that should help ease some of the motherboard price pain if nothing else. But with memory still so expensive and performance on higher latency kits really, really disadvantaging these new next gen CPUs, picking up a Ryzen 7600X is not necessarily a bad idea, but it needs to be one that's well thought through and well planned to ensure you end up with a setup that delivers the kind of performance levels you're expecting. You can read our full reviews of the Ryzen 5 76 and 7900X down below. Thanks for tuning in there, guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.